this is a special series where you get to follow along with a real person taking real accent coaching sessions from me. You've already met Miguel, a tech coach and creative coder from Ecuador. He has a high language level, but the influence from Spanish still causes some problems from time to time in comprehension, or at least it gives him anxiety about it. And the anxiety is also a problem. The last time we met, he got an accent assessment and an action plan from me. After the assessment, in order to prepare for today, I asked him to create a list of words and phrases that he often uses for work that maybe he's not 100% sure about. So listen to what it's like to get one-on-one accent coaching from me in this full-length session. Hi, I'm Accent Coach Bianca, and I'm here to help you because you might not know this, but your voice is your choice when it comes to your accent in English. I try to release a podcast episode every other week, and you can subscribe and get the show notes wherever you get your podcasts. And by the way, that includes YouTube for the full video version. Now let's get on with the show. So we started a document the last time, but I think you gave me a different email. There's like a little chat box in here. I don't know if we used it last time. Can you put your email in there that you want me to use for that document? And then I'll share it with you at that email. That's one. Okay, cool. I'm doing everything kind of like slowly because the cat is literally sitting on the keyboard right now. So if I'm really slow, then that's why. I'm trying to use my other keyboard. And she's busy stepping on one keyboard. Okay. My, my girlfriend is uh, is a veterinary, and yeah, she told me one once that cats love to get inside of little boxes. They cannot fit in the box, but they take it <laughs> as a as a reto. How do you say reto? Like a challenge? Yeah, like a challenge. Oh God, my mm-hmm. cat did that How this is, morning. Is... I had like a little laundry basket. And she was like, I'm going to turn the basket over and sit in it. It's just a funny picture. I should send it to you. (laughs) Yeah. Like, why? Why, cat? Why? I don't know. But it's funny. Okay. I'm going to share this document with you on this email address and then put the link up here so that we can open it and look at it together. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right. So look in the chat box. Got it? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Is it the same? The... uh, uh... It's the same as before. Yeah. But I thought you sent me a message saying that it was the wrong email. So that's why I was adding this one. The other one was like an iCloud. I I believe that I edited that mail. That's on the... the Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. So don't worry about that. (laughs) (laughs) So let's review the things that we talked about last time and let's jump into these things. I want to ask you your preferences. But before that, give me the update. What do you feel like is going on lately with how you're speaking? And what do you feel like is the biggest challenge right now? I feel like it's been better these days. I've tried to to speak more in, in English with people that speak English all the time. Mm. But I, I feel like the toughest part is sometimes I'm trying to keep my train of, of thought and something mm-hmm. comes up and suddenly a, a word disappears that I need to find and I get like scared. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No matter what I do, it it's like like you said, like there's this emotional block probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's probably what bothers me the most. And mm-hmm. also I get very um, insecure, insecure, insecure mm-hmm. about w- when I have to, to come up with a sentence and mm-hmm. have it grammatic, grammatically correct. But uh, mm-hmm. even if fits correct, I, I am like insecure about it. <laughs> so I, I jump onto a chat GPT to, to mm-hmm. check it if it's grammatically correct, but I lose a lot of time doing that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When is this happening when you, you jump on chat GPT? Is it like in the middle of a conversation or is it like, oh, I'm just thinking in English and I want to check some things and I've got some time now? When does this usually happen? That's on, on, middle, on, the, mid, on the middle of conversation. For mm-hmm. instance, when we are chatting on Anywhere on probably Discord with some friends that speak in English or on Sanji's uh, estreno. How do you say estreno? Uh, training? Uh, well, no, estreno. estreno. Estreno is. I don't know that one. When, when he projects the monthly, the, the weekly podcast. So mm-hmm. we chat on, on, on the chat box. Oh, well, there, like so... in, the, in the chat box itself. Oh, like in the, yeah. in the video part when he's broadcasting live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. I don't know if we have a specific word for that. So during that time, it's verbal or it's when you're chatting, typing? I'm typing. Okay. So you have time. You're not like 
speaking a sentence. You don't stop in the middle, run to chat GPT, and then come back and finish your <laughs> sentence, right? <laughs> no, 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 I, no I, I can't do that because I, I would have to make the people wait too long. Uh huh. That's what I was wondering. I thought, wow, in the middle of a conversation, you maybe you've got multiple windows open. Or maybe some people could do that. They'd have to be pretty fast and pretty good. But <laughs> but that's not the case then. Yeah. Okay, that's good at least. Because maybe somebody's anxiety is so high that they're like, I can't even finish this sentence and hold on a second, I need to check because I'm so worried about it being correct. I could see that, but I, I didn't think that was the case with you. So good, 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> so mostly it's this affective block thing, right? And have you been making videos to do the technical stuff? Any scripts or anything so far? Uh, I have been reading some documentation. Mm -hmm. So I found a little bit, some words that I put on the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So we can practice maybe those. All right, let's start with that. But, then. Yeah, but I, no, the, uh -huh. I, I didn't do a lot of recording in English. This yeah. week I tried to do in Spanish a lot ah. because it's way easier to explain, especially technical stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so that, but, but I will try maybe this week to, to do a little bit in English, especially mm -hmm. about animation. So I have maybe some words that I, I would like to, to review. Ah, perfect. Yeah, I know we, we talked about the animation thing. You can see the cat going in front of the camera mm -hmm. and wanting attention. And so, you know, what's a really nice challenge, I would say, because it is easier in Spanish. You know all the technical words, but I don't know if you've had this trouble. You're saying the right technical words, but the person doesn't know those technical words. So maybe it's not even helping. So possibly think about this, maybe going in a simpler direction in English, that might actually be really helpful to you because it might just help you explain things in simpler terms, like in any language, you know, without the jargon, without the technical terms. So yeah, definitely start thinking about how would I do this in English or even how would I do it in Spanish in as, as simple a way as possible? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a very good idea. Okay, perfect. So let's look at your, your parking lot. We have this like chart already. I want you to read each of these things. And read it, read it three times because I want to see how you're currently saying it. And I want to get some data. So I want to hear it three times. And then if something is off about it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's wrong with this. We can fix these things. You wrote them on the list because they're important. So let's start with these. Okay. 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 So the so first, first one is one. Mm -hmm. now, why don't you now? Okay. Why don't you? And one more now. Why don't you? Okay. So, so let's sometimes it's like yeah. I stop in the why. I don't know why. I, no, why? why I don't, don't. Know why. <laughs> Yes. And I was, <laughs> when you wrote it down, I was going to say, can we, I don't know if this was just a mistake, but can we put a comma right here after the now? Mm -hmm. So you're pausing there, right? Because what you say is true. You're pausing in a weird place and that's not pronunciation, but it does say now why, now why what? Mm -hmm. Now, why don't you? Now, why don't you? Now, why don't you? So that's one thing. I want you to change that pause. Absolutely. And right here, let's take a look at this together. So this is your list. I'm going to copy and paste this and we're going to put it here. Have I showed you this before? Have I showed you my app that I have? No. Okay. So this is an app that I had made. You'll find this really interesting. And it's an app that I had made to specifically help with showing people how to kind of visualize their pronunciation. So we call it phonetic markup. So I'm going to keep all your notes here and then take a picture and then also add that to our notes. Okay. So you'll have a picture of all these things. All right. So we got our comma added in here. I want to look at two things, three things right here. The O, O sound. You know how in Spanish your O is very short and it's only one sound. It's like, oh, oh, right? I want you to move your jaw like this. O, O. See how I'm moving my jaw? O, O. O, O. There we go. So you do it right here. You say, ow, ow, now, right? You do it right here. I, I, Y. And I want you to do it here. O, O, don't. Don't. Sorry. Do, O, O. So I'm going to mark it this way. O, 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 right? I'm, I'm sure you probably know that there's a little apostrophe here. And that's important. Here we've got several options. I just want to give you your options and say, hey, pick whatever you like, right? So we're going to make a couple copies of this. First option, you can make this what we call a true T. Don't you, to, don't you, don't you, don't you, right? Don't that's you. fine. The problem is I'm not hearing any of these three options. And so I want to give you your options. Number one, full T. Why don't you? Why don't you? Two, two. So it sounds like there's a T there. Two. Second one, we've got this thing. It's called a glottal stop. Have you ever heard of that before? No. Totally fine if you haven't. 
So think about, I don't know if you have any babies in your family, any nieces or nephews. Do you have any little kids in your family? Yeah, a long time ago, but I can remember <laughs> something. Not, any, not right now. But when they were little, you probably had some like keys in your hand and you would like drop the keys and you'd say, uh-oh, right? Do you ever play with babies? Mm -hmm. You ever played with babies like that? So they'd say, uh-oh, do that for me. Say, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh, 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 that thing you're doing right there, uh, 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 uh. that's called a glottal uh, stop. Uh, uh. So back here, you've got your glottis, your epiglottis, and you're kind of like tightening it. And so that sound in English, very often we replace that. So why don't you, uh, oh, give that a try. Let's see, don't, don't. Exactly. Why don't you, why don't. Why you. don't you? Yeah, That's there it. we go. So we stopped the, the, the year, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why Super don't American you? sound. So we call it a glottal That's stop. And it has this symbol. It kind of looks like a question mark, right? So if you ever see me write this, it's like a question mark without the dot. If you ever see me write this, I want that uh, sound right there. And we do it when there's a final T. And we do it when it's a really common word like don't. That's a really common word. I say that a hundred times a day. Don't, don't, don't touch the stove. It's hot, for example. It, it's hot. I do quite a, quite a a lot. <laughs> I'm very American sound here. So that's one of your options. I would totally say go for that option. Number three, here's an example. I've got this final T. I'm going to add a couple of words down here. We said we can do a glottal stop when there's a final T. It doesn't matter what's next. But when you have a final T and the next sound is a Y, right, we get a very certain combination. Maybe you've heard it. It's the ch as in chocolate, ch, ch, ch. why don't you, chew, why don't you, why don't you? So the symbol for that why is this, this thing. It looks like a T and a, and a little swishy thing, right? So why don't you, now, why don't you, now, why don't you, now, why don't you, say it that way for me. Now, why don't you? Chew, chew, like I'm chewing my chew, food. Chew, uh -huh. chew, why chew. Why don't you? So it's anytime you've got a final T, and a Y is next, right? So here's another one. I'm going to ask you to say this one. What plus you and last plus year. What would those sound like in this case? What you uh -huh. and last year. Last, last year. Ch ch cheer. Almost last like year. cheering. Yay, right? right. Chew, chew. What you, what <laughs> you year, want what to year. eat for dinner is disgusting, for example. Last year you, I don't know, broke up with me. So ch ch ch. The symbol is like what this. It's like a T and a little swooshy. Thing right there. It sounds like the ch in chocolate. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've sense. got some choices. Whenever there's a final T, it's a really tricky sound. You know, in English, vowels are a nightmare, but mostly the consonants are pretty consistent, right? Like I see a B, I say a B. I see a V, I say a V. Mostly they're pretty consistent. But these final T's are super, super tricky, and you happen to find this thing. All right, so give me all three. One, two, and three. Three. Give me those three. I forgot the first one. Can you please repeat <laughs> yeah, it? It's just like a T sound. <laughs> t -t -t. Why don't uh, you? Right. Why don't you? Uh huh. Why don't you? Mm -hmm. Second one. Was it right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, why don't don't uh, I you? Don't you? Don't there we you. go. Why don't, don't the first, you? Huh? Why don't you? The second one. There we go. The third one. Why don't you? Yeah. The there we go. There we go. So let's put these into real sentences. For example, it sounds like you're giving some advice, right? You're telling somebody, hey, here's a suggestion I have. So give me an end of a sentence, three different endings. You can just say them and I'll write them down. Uh, why don't you begin with something, but I, I can come up with hey, that. That's fine. Why don't you begin with something new? I'm just going to write these down because these are realistic examples that you might tell somebody, right? Give me a different suggestion and this time go, Ugh. why don't you repeat after me? <laughs> Perfect. You sound like you're doing my job, though. There we go. <laughs> why don't you repeat after me? Yes, there we go. And oh, last no. one. Why don't you what? You process the model maybe because there's, there's some part about machine learning. That I don't know. Yeah, Why don't exactly. you process, pre-process the model? Is it process or pre-process? Pre-process. Pre-process. Pre pre okay, yeah. perfect. I want to make sure I get this right. Not for me because I don't even know what that means. Doesn't matter. You're the one that's going to be saying this. There <laughs> we go. Okay, so number one, check. You feel like that's pretty good? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Why, awesome. Why don't you begin something new? Mm -hmm. Why don't the don't is actually what I didn't think about that that you have to pronounce the don't. Oh, really? What were you I, thinking I was the that. problem? I didn't know. 
When you wrote this yeah, down originally, it, you put it on your list, you probably had something in your mind. What was it? Uh, no, it was tough to pronounce a little bit fast, a little bit quick for me. Ah. But I believe that the, most of the problem is on the don't, because mm. I, I, I think like I pronounce don't, don't. Mm -hmm. like, it might be uh, uh, oh. like umbrella, dunt, don't. dunt, right? Do, whoa, mm. whoa. Yeah. yeah, and that might just be because you're doing it too short, more like a Spanish O. Oh or I should say, uh, more like, and I have the opposite problem. I don't really shorten it quite enough, I would say. Here, I'm just going to move us over here so we can see a little bit better. All right, so we can say that that's a check, right? That's pretty good. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, so let's go back and let's see the other things that are on the list, right? I'll make it a little bit bigger. What's next here? Let's go to this one. Say how you're saying it now, and then let's generative. see what we can do with it. Again? Generative. Again? Generative or generative. I'm not sure where is the, the tilde. It's how perfectly it? fine. So we're going to just make these um, easy. So for you, it's syllable stress. We call that syllable stress, right? I think sometimes you call it the tonic syllable or something. So this is a really interesting one that you chose. There's a reason you don't know. It's because it's inconsistent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me give you an example, a different example. I'm going to go over to the dictionary. And let's take a pretty common word. I think you have brothers and sisters, right? Yes. So you have you have a what? Brothers. You have a, what starts with an F? Family. Family. Okay, there Family. we go. You probably can't see it. Okay, you said it in three syllables. You said da-da-da, da-da-da, mm. family, family. That's perfectly fine. You can also do it in two. Family, family. Have you ever done family. that one? Family, family, right? So family. what you've got here is this center you can see maybe it's it's a sound called schwa it has a name uh, uh, uh. often when you've got a longer word three four syllables and the center syllable is that uh we're often getting rid of it these days a lot of people are dropping it so there's two acceptable ways to say that family family literature literature we're reducing a lot of those bigger words and that's what you have here in your example try to say this in four syllables versus three syllables. See if you can do it. And I'll tell you where to cut it right here in that syllable in the middle, the second syllable. See if you can do it. And so the four syllable version is generative, generative. There we go. Uh -huh. the syllable stress is going to be on the first one. You're right. Generative, generative. Now try it with three. Generative. There generative. we go. Generative, generative. So I'm going to blend the N and the R together. Genra, nra, nra. Generative, generative 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 right there we go generative. so just a little side note too just what i did exactly if you're ever looking in the dictionary it's going to tell you how many syllables there are and for the most part you're going to see it's one two three four or they they just kind of show you the rest one two three generative generative and i wanted to point out the fact that we have these vowels your eh and then uh and whether or not you have the second uh, and then you have i. So I want e, uh, i, e, e, uh, e, e, generative, generative. Say it again. Generative. There we go. Uh, not r, uh, but r, r, genre. Genre. There we go. Like general, general, or general. That looks like kind of a rotated e. The symbol for that schwa sound is r, generative. Generative. Uh -huh. generative. generative, generative, generative. Say it for generative. me three times. Generative. There we go. Generative, mm -hmm. generative. There we go. Generative, generative, generative. There you go. Now it's fast and accurate. Excellent. How do you feel about that one? Very good. Very good. <laughs> and what's the context that you use this word in? Can you give me a, a sample sentence? Generative are called these models of artificial intelligence. So I was trying to make a short video about that. Oh, so right. and the, maybe a context can be. Let, let me search for a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For a little text that I. Yeah, and, and you can uh, send me that little text if you want, and we can put that in here. Another thing we can do today or another time is we can take your whole script, we can put it in my app, and we can make it perfect like that. So I think we talked before about you using a teleprompter. It doesn't work well on the teleprompter, but I can show you what I usually do on my teleprompter instead. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Bianca. Oh, sure. I, I can't find my text, but probably <laughs> I can read a little bit from Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. We can look it up. I don't know which one you use, but I like to do this one, for example. Okay, so I'm going to use perplexity. I'm asking it the question, is AI generative or non-generative? And can you explain? So here, let's take this text. That's a good paragraph right here. Is that big enough for you? Can you see it? Yeah. 
Okay, so let's read this one out loud because it's got that target word in there quite a few times. So read this one out loud for me. I don't care about any other mistakes right now unless they include <laughs> what you, don't you. If it's got some of that T and the Y combination, then I'll correct you with that. But let's really specifically practice this word with this text. You ready? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Gen generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that can produce various types of content, including text, imagery, audio, and synthetic data. It uses machine learning algorithm algorithms to create outputs based on a training data set. Generative AI excels at pattern creation, while traditional AI excels at pattern recognition. Generative AI outputs are carefully calibrated combinations of the data used to train the algorithms, and they usually and they usually have random elements, which mean which mean that with which means this one I I, I usually have problem with, with this the s yeah word. in yeah, in the verbs the you're just forgetting which it means... I think you know it's there you just forget it <laughs> maybe which means they can produce they can produce a variety of products from one input request generative generative AI mm. holds enormous potential to generate to create new capabilities and value for enterprise I can read that word it also can introduce new risks. Many exist, uh, existing regu regulatory, regulatory. Maybe we, we can omit some of the of the syllables in this one. Ah, regulatory, 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 regulatory. I don't think that we can, mm -hmm. but we can take a quick look. That's for sure. Regulatory, regulatory, regulatory. Let's see. Nope, there's no choices here. So usually these dropped center syllables that have that schwa, that uh, in there, you can tell from the dictionary, but things are always changing. So if I were going to say, hey, here's a long word with a schwa sound in the center, it's a pretty good candidate. So I think that's a, a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. So you get the idea, right? So generative, 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 generative. generative. Both are totally correct. The tendency now is to drop that and get rid of it. But there's a lot of words out there. So if you find more, you can kind of put them in your brain and file them under, oh, here's a syllable I can probably drop, right? That's awesome. very helpful, Bianca. Thanks. Oh, great, great. Yeah, this is this is important. So when we do like one-on-one -on -one stuff, it's really great because we can find the patterns and find out what's most meaningful to somebody. Yeah. So this is great that you came with a list. Some people say, oh, I didn't have time to make a list, which is fine. We are all busy. <laughs> but the more you can make the list, the more you can prepare, the more meaningful it is because you know, you know you have problems with this or at least questions so we can fix those today. So this is pretty yeah. awesome. All right, let's take the next one. I think this is an interesting one because we probably stole the word from Spanish. I'm not sure what the etymology is. It's a cognate, which means that it looks similar enough in English and Spanish that probably the mistakes are coming from there. So if I weren't here, how would you say this? Jaguar. Jaguar. Mm -hmm. I have problem. I have a, yeah trouble in, in the G-U. Oh, this right here. Uh-huh. 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 Right yeah. here. This Any G-U. So can you think of any other words that have G-U? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I, I don't think... That's what AI is for, right? We can ask AI, give me a list of, I don't know, 10 words that contain GU. So we can test your th hypothesis, right? We can say, oh, is it that it's GU? Always GU? Or is it just sometimes? So would you say that you have problems with all of these? Um, probably. I, I don't know. Let, Maybe. let me read it for you. Uh -huh. August. Yeah. Figure. Uh-huh. Leak. Okay. Figure is, I, I, I am not sure if I'm pronouncing, pronouncing it exactly right, mm -hmm. but I feel like figure is a pretty easy one for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also leak, yeah. leak too. Yeah, also Guitar, fine. Guitar, uh, guilty tongue, yeah. Gu Guinea. I have a trouble with Guinea, I believe. Oh, Guinea. yeah. Uh -huh. Guinea. Oh, I see the pattern, I think. I don't think it's G-U. I think it's the U-A, because this is the E and the A. Do you have trouble with this? Do you say guil, guilty? No. Right? No. 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 So sometimes you're reading more like Spanish, where each letter has its own word, but the spelling in English, two letters can just make one sound, right? And that's the case here. Even though I have E and A, at least in English, the way I pronounce this country name is Gin E, just E, Guinea, Guinea. We know that there's some silent letters. We don't say play gi, play gui, or anything like that. Sometimes we do, arguing, uing, but I don't say. Gui, guilty, right? Even though they're both UI. So I think it's the vowel. I don't think it's the G and the U together. What do you think of that? 
And yeah, you're, it, you're probably right. It could, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. That's just my guess. So here we go. Jag, no problem. J -j -j, as in juice, jag, yeah. uh huh. And then let's say. You are. You like, are. Uh, like, like you are. Almost. Like almost. Are. Think about what if I did this? What if I went this? Jagger. Almost. Yep. And because Jagger. of that G, I have to add a little something. It's called a semi vowel. What if I did this? Bar. Close. Jaguar. 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 Yeah, like, are you going to go? Yes, we are. War. War. Yeah, I'm trying war. to think of another word that has that same combination, but it's not. It's because we probably took it from French or Spanish and we just did our own thing with it and it just stuck. So I want to show you what that looks like. So because of the British, we've got a lot of different things. So for us, it's ah as in box. Jaguar. War. Jaguar. Mm-hmm. Jaguar. War. So Jaguar. I'm going to mark that with this little special kind of A that we've got here. This one. War. War. Ah, ah. As in box. Ah, ah. ah. Jaguar. 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 Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Jaguar. Some people say, because of the Spanish, they would see this J and kind of make it like a Y. Were you saying, do you remember, were you saying y, yag, or j, j, jag? I am not sure. Jag, probably. Jag, it should be j. Okay, so I thought you said it correctly, but just to note, that's j as in juice, or j uh. as in January, and the symbol we have for that kind of looks like that. So, jaguar, jaguar, jaguar. jaguar. And this is interesting. Why is this on your list? Is it a technical thing, like the name of a software or something like that? No, no, I, I believe I heard it in, in a song, probably because I have to sing on, on Wednesday, uh -huh. um, on Friday. So uh -huh. uh, that, that word and the song was pronounced like Jack, you are, but I believe that that was like a stylistic choice, probably. Could be, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was able to the pronounce notes. In, in, in either way. Exactly. And look, it's not wrong, right? You can say Jag, you are, you are, you can say that in English. And especially in British English, you're going to say it in those three syllables with the little y in there, right? But it's just not the most common way. But yeah, like you said, probably it's a style choice, maybe to fit with the melody in some way. So yeah, that makes sense. But I wouldn't say that. If I were in the forest and I saw this creature, I would say jaguar, jaguar, jaguar. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So what, what's your singing about then? I, I, it was Man Either by... You were just singing a song? You just happened to be singing a song? Or are you like in a band? No, I'm in a band, but we are doing this cover of 80s oh. music. Oh, okay. So the song is by, by Daryl Hall. It's called Man uh -huh. Eater. It's very popular. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good one. Oh, so you're doing a cover of it. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to add the rest of these to the list. Now I think it's going to be easier. Now you know the idea of how we're going to correct, what we're going to think about, right? I think these are making sense to you so far, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let's then add these. So I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. So without looking, what was the first one? Give me an example of that first one. Now, why don't you? Uh-huh. Now, don't now, forget to pause why there. Now, you? why don't now, you? Why don't now, you? why don't you? Uh-huh. Now, why don't you? Yeah, now, pause, pause. Why don't you? Okay, there you go. So I'm giving advice. That's a really good one. So let's go back to doing these phrases instead of just words. Okay, <laughs> what's the end of this? I wouldn't if I were you. I wouldn't. If I were you. Can you hear what I'm doing with that T? Oh, yeah. You're Already, the, right? I'm doing that glottal stop again. Doesn't matter what's next. I wouldn't if I were you. I wouldn't if I were you. I wouldn't if I were you. Say that for me. I wouldn't if I were you. Uh-huh. I wouldn't if I were you. There we go. Sorry, sorry my dog is... <laughs> Dogs and cats and everything today. There we go. So say it one more time. I want to see if anything is, else is in there that we need to fix. I wouldn't if... I wouldn't... Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. I wouldn't, I wouldn't if I were you. There we go. Okay. Two little, little tiny, let's say, fine tuning, right? Uh, see this O and U? We were just talking about like, oh, there's two vowels that are written. What am I supposed to do with that in English? And this one, you're almost saying like, ooh, as in boot. Woo, woo, wouldn't. I wouldn't, right? I'm not saying you're that far off, but it's in that direction. Does that make sense? Ooh, you're doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing ooh, ooh, ooh. But I don't want that. I don't want ooh, woo. I want uh, uh, as in book, wouldn't. Wo oh, right. Wo wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't. Wouldn't, wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. So your tongue is in the back and your lips wouldn't. are relaxed. Uh, uh, wo wo wouldn't. Wo wouldn't. Wouldn't. And it's going to sound like when you chop down a tree, we get what? We get wood, wood, 
wouldn't. Would. I would, would like a piece of cake. I wouldn't if I were you. Okay, one mm. more little thing in here. And I know this is coming, I think, more from Spanish, right? Give me the letter E in Spanish. How would I read that? The normal E is E. E, oh, right? Okay, the, take that. I... Take that. Because in English, we have a E. Remember earlier we were doing two sounds like O and I mm. and OW. We have another one, A. I'm moving my jaw. A, A. a. It's two sounds, right? So a. we start with the same sound, right? We start with E. But then I go to E. That's not what I want here. You're doing this. You're doing wet, wet, where, wet, wet, wet. Here's what I want. Er, er, where, where. were, for example, where, where. were oh, you, yeah. right? Can you hear the difference? Air, er, air, er. I want er, er. right where. here. Where. Er, er, er. It's like this. It's almost so, like losing the, the E. Yeah, in a way, right? Er, er, were. I wouldn't were. if I if were I you. Were you. Uh-huh. There we go. I were you. There we go. And do you remember this earlier when we did generative? Genre or genre. Genre. That sound right there, that's what you're actually doing. That has a name, the schwa. And if you look at the symbol, it's that rotated E with a bit of a hook. And that's because there's an R next. So er, oh, er, not uh. But er, er. Do you see the relationship er. between those two? Yeah, yeah. Uh and er. Okay, er. uh and er, uh and er. There er. we go. Er. Okay, one more er. time with this phrase. I wouldn't if I... Oh, I forgot <laughs> about the wouldn't. I would... How was uh, for uh, the wouldn't? Uh, 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 right. Uh, I uh. wouldn't if uh -huh. I were you. There we I go. Wouldn't. Tell me something that you wouldn't do. Can you maybe make that phrase a little bit longer and give me like, I don't know, a verb or a noun or something like that? I wouldn't steal it if I were you, probably. Like steal as in take, as in a thief? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. No. Good life Steals, advice. Right? <laughs> Good life <laughs> advice. Uh, what about some advice about technical stuff, things that you work with? What's uh, something that people do that you would like caution against? I would edit like that. Ah, there you go. Okay, whole sentence. I wouldn't. I wouldn't edit it like that. Should I say edit, edit it like yep. that? Yep, edit it, yeah. edit it, edit it. I wouldn't yeah. edit it. I wouldn't edit it like edit that. It. And you can hear those other glottal stops, right? If I were to write that down, it would look like this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, uh, edit uh, uh, it. Edit. Uh, uh. You're right. going to start hearing these glottal stops everywhere. They're mm -hmm. hiding. Now you know they're there and now you're going to see them. So say that again with those three glottal stops in there. I wouldn't edit it I would, if I were you. I wouldn't yep. edit, edit it if I were you. There you go. And if I we added it, it, like that, it, that's another it, glottal like stop. Like that if I were you. <laughs> yes, that's four in one sentence. I wouldn't <laughs> edit it like that, that if I were you. I wouldn't edit it like that if I were you. There you go. So a if lot you of your reading, final T's are going to be replaced by glottal stops. If you're reading a sentence like this one fast, mm -hmm. should you still stop it? Let me read pronounced. it fast and you tell me. Ready? I wouldn't edit it. I wouldn't edit it like that if I were you. Oh, yeah, I believe you're stopping that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's one thing you might be hearing, which I'm sure you know this already. There's another final T, which we call it, it's called a flap T. You know how in Spanish you have two R sounds, right? Like you have the word for expensive and you have the word for a car, right? Tell me the difference in Spanish between those two. Es carro, that, uh -huh. that's a car, and uh -huh. expensive is caro. So, so that one second one you're doing... Number. You're taking your tongue and you're just tapping, right? You're just tapping that yes. on the edge of your, your ridge right here, the bump right here. Ara, 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 ara. Take that tap that sound point. that you're doing. And you probably already know this. We call it a flap T. So if I'm going to say the thing that I'm drinking, I'm not going to say W-A-T-E-R like this, water. I'm not going to say t t, -t. I'm going to say water. water, water. That's our flap T. One way you can get it is between two vowels. So I have some choices. I don't have to glottal stop these. Look at this one. This T is now between two vowels. So I could take that T and instead of a glottal stop, I can do this. It's got a little different symbol. And that's da 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 da. That if. That if. I can say that, that if, if oh. or that if. So when I'm going fast, sometimes I do that. So same here. I've got E D I T and then I've got another I. So I can say, oh, well, I'm not going to glottal stop that. I'm going to flap it, edit, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it, edit it, right? 
So I've got some choices there, right? Again, here's now a T. I wouldn't, I wouldn't net it. I wouldn't. It's a choice, but most people are not going to glottal stop that one because it's not between two vowels, right? It's again an N, a T, and then a vowel in that one. And then I've got yeah. a vowel and a T and a consonant. So probably I'm not going to flap that T. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So let's try it this way. <laughs> Give me this sentence now with some flap T's and some glottal stop T's. I'll, I'll model it first. I wouldn't edit it like that if I were you. You try. I wouldn't edit it like that if... Oh, I, I had trouble. Like that, that if. if that if. I, hmm? That if. That if I were you. There you I go. I wouldn't edit it like that if I uh -huh. were you. Yeah, really nice. So again, they're all choices. They're all correct. <laughs> like whatever feels good to you, just do that. But those final T's, you've got lots of choices there. These are really good phrases because I bet you're going to say them quite a lot. Yes. Awesome. How does all that feel so far? So far, so good? Awesome, awesome. Awesome, nice. awesome. Okay, cool. So we've got these next should be easy, right? Because <laughs> we just did a whole lot at once. So say this, but give me a sentence, please. A lot of water. Mm. <laughs> you're drinking. But, 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 uh -huh. <laughs> but what I have issue with a lot is because I sometimes hear people say it like a lot of water and other times... Oh, a it's lot this of part. It's a lot of oh, it's the beginning. Okay, I thought it was going to be this vowel right here. Because remember earlier we did this one, Probably Jaguar. Too. And this should be the same yeah. thing. Ah, uh, ah, uh, lot, lot, a lot. lot. I thought that I was going to be it. it. And not too much like O, oh, but more like ah, uh, ah, uh, uh -huh, open jaw. Mm -hmm. A lot, uh, a lot of water. A lot of water. The thing you're really asking about then is the A, right? And I want to show you that it's the same as this. So you probably know that we reduce a lot of words in English. I think you kind of do in Spanish too. I think sometimes I hear things really fast. I'm like, wait a minute. That's a short version of the full word. So, you know, we do that quite a lot too. And we reduce the vowels. So you have choices, choices, choices. Both are correct. What you're hearing is right. I want to show you the choice and explain it to you. So let me start with this one though. So really, technically, when it's raining, I need an umbrella, right? Uh, uh umbrella uh uh that uh sound that's what it's supposed to say of uh uh of water uh, of uh, of uh, but we uh. often reduce it because it's not a very important word so i'm gonna say it really quickly and instead of of i'm gonna use that schwa again of of can you hear that of 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 both are correct one is considered like the full version so if i were giving a presentation at work i would be very sure to say of, of. But if I said, pass me a bottle of water, I'm not going to be so careful about what I say because who cares, right? You're going to figure it out. Then I'm going to reduce that using that, uh, that schwa. Does that make sense so far? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this uh. is very new for me, but, but yeah. It, it, uh, <laughs> awesome. So the question is, am I saying this word clearly and completely and correctly as fully as possible or am I reducing it? That's the question in your mind. And the same thing is happening here. It's this little article. In English, we have the three articles, a, an, and the. And people ask the same question. Am I supposed to say the or am I supposed to say the? So I'm going to write that down. So e, e, the, or u, uh, u, uh, the. It's the same thing that we were just talking about. E, e, e versus u, uh, u, uh, u. Uh. The, 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 the. So I've got the same thing here. I've got choices and choices and choices. I can say umbrella. Uh, uh, a lot of water. I can say a, a, a lot of water. That's also perfectly acceptable. And then I can say the schwa again. A uh, 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 lot of water, a uh, lot of water. Right? All of those are correct. So you touched on something I think that's very close to my heart. People say, is this correct? Is this correct? And we have this thing where they say, okay, either I'm a prescriptivist when a lot of us, when we're learning any language, me included, I want to know in Spanish, hey, what's the answer? Tell me what's right. And you're going to say, well, in Mexico, they say this. In Ecuador, they say this. And in Colombia, they say this. So that's very confusing to me as a Spanish learner because there's more correct answers than I would like. So a prescriptivist says right and wrong. I'm a teacher. I'm going to take out my red pen. I'm going to say, nope, this is wrong. So if I want a prescriptivist answer, what am I supposed to say? I guess I'm supposed to say the, if there's a vowel next, the apple versus the, with a consonant next, the computer. 
A prescriptivist will tell you that. They'll say there's a right and there's a wrong. But I'm not a prescriptivist. I'm, I'm a descriptivist. I like to describe or describe what I see. It's a school of thought. So I'm not a prescriptivist. I'm a descriptivist. So I'm going to say, you know what? You're supposed to say the apple, but nobody does. Everyone says the apple or a lot of people say that. And I'm going to say, here's what people really say, like on the street. So the answer of your question is, if you look in the dictionary, you're going to see that there's a lot of real possibilities that are all correct. That If you took a test, they'd all be correct. But the reality is that people say a lot more than what they say is correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I think that's more your style. You want to describe how people are speaking and not to say correct and incorrect because sometimes there is a yes, no answer, but sometimes, sometimes no. You know what I mean? So you get the idea. Now let's keep going. Okay. Tell me this one. Reminder. reminder. Perfectly fine. Reminder, reminder, reminder. You're saying e e e. Uh-huh. And you're doing like this. E, 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 re, re, reminder. A lot of people do that. Some people say the reduced version. They say uh, uh, reminder. Uh, reminder, uh, reminder. reminder, 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 remind me to set my alarm, remind me to set my alarm. So that's just a question of north, south, east, west, different accents. Both are perfectly fine. And if you have a preference, use your preference. No big deal. Yeah. And this one? Is staring. Oh, have... okay. Which one is it? Is it me looking at you for a long time uncomfortably? Or is it like Samuel L. Jackson in a movie? I'm not sure, but I sometimes notice that I pronounce this as like starring. Ah, it, because, because it could be both. Both are, both are perfectly correct, right? So, for example, you're Samuel L. Jackson in a new movie, Snakes on a Plane, number two, let's say. And then it's R, R, star, starring, like stars right. in the sky or stars in a movie. Starring, starring. Right. It's that R sound again. Star, star, starring. No problem there. Now... I think that could be confusing with me looking at you uncomfortably for a long time. So starring has two R's, double R, starring. This one is, imagine I'm going up the air, air stairs. Then I'm staring, stare, stare, staring. like hair, staring. Okay. So they're two different words, but they're very close. So if something is not spelled correctly, that could be an issue. See what I mean? So the first one you're right is starring. And the second one is Staring, starring, staring, starring, starring, staring, 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 staring. Say them both for me. Starring, staring, there we starring, go. staring, uh -huh. starring, staring. There we go. And I'm going to write both of those down. R, R, air, air, starring, staring, starring, staring. So you're not wrong. <laughs> it was just like they're both there and there's a small difference. So that was a really good question to ask. Okay, we got two more here. I'll give you a clue. You've already done something like this. What if I take this center E and I get rid of it. I can say there's two ways to say several. it. What's your guess? Several and or, several. Uh, oh, oh, get them a little bit more. <laughs> several. Uh-huh. Maybe more. Uh, uh, One, two, several. three. Uh-huh. And then do it in two. Several. There we several. go. Vr, vr. Like you're on your motorcycle. Vroom, vroom. Several. Vr, vr. Exactly. Several, 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 several. Again, same several, thing. It's several. more common to start dropping those, but it's up to you. Totally your choice. All right, last one. What's this one got going on? Platforms, platforms. Okay, here we go. All this is good. Or, or, forms, forms. That's really good. And this one, your Spanish A... Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, yeah. Your tongue is in the middle, right? I want you to go forward. Ah, yeah. ah, uh, uh, plat. Platforms. There Plat we go. Platforms, platforms. platforms. Uh-huh. Platforms. platforms. There we go. That, that's a tough one for me. I had to practice the eh uh, sound more. And I bet it's really common, Plat this word, for work. Yeah, platforms. Platforms. There's different platforms, platforms for doing these things. Yeah, absolutely. One extra thing. Let's put another word there. I want to show you something else to think about because we didn't do a lot of phrases today. I'm just going to make up some phrases here. So I'm looking at this final S sound and I'm looking at how you're going to link it with a vowel and how you're going to blend it with another consonant or two after that. So say this first phrase and pay attention to the S. Platforms on the internet. There we go. Zon, zon. That S is actually a Z sound. That's what I was looking for. Z, z. It's easy to hear when there's a vowel next. Zon, zon. Platforms zon the internet. And now what about if there's a consonant next? Can you keep that good Z sound in there? Platforms from the internet. Oh, uh, there we go. Z, fr. Z, fr. Right? Keeping, yeah, internet. keeping that vibration in your throat. Platforms from the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
See what I mean? Not horns from the internet. Exactly. I, I so I was worried that you would be dropping right. that Z sound and it might sound like an S. You know what I mean? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. So this is what's on your list. What do you think would be helpful besides adding more words for next time? Like your vowels all sound good. We thought we might review all the vowels, but I don't think you really needed that at all. And, and does it make sense to you how I'm correcting you? And is there anything left yeah, yeah. that, that still isn't clear? No, I probably need a lot of practice with a lot of these things because I am so used to saying like in this wrong way, a lot mm -hmm. of these words. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I really need to practice all this. And I probably have to rewatch the video because uh, maybe some of the sounds I am not able to, to reproduce uh huh. Like later on, yeah. yeah, yeah. When I'm not when I'm not here to like catch you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. Rewatch the video. You were talking about affective block and this emotional block that you have. So before the next time I see you, do a couple things. Number one, add to your list of words anything you come across, any questions, any phrases. Throw them on the list. Make it as long as you want. Number two, yeah, rewatch the video. See if all of that makes sense. If there's any questions, you could start with that next time. And what I would really like to do is have you have some scripts ready or at least maybe some role playing and conversation from you like helping people with their with their technical stuff so that we can maybe elicit and, and take out some more mistakes from you that come up. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Sound good? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have any other questions for today? Any other thoughts? No, Bianca, thank you so much. This was super, super helpful. Oh, that it's, is awesome. It's way more clear now because a, a lot of this stuff is like you don't even know where to begin to like face, fix the, the tiny mistakes and tiny errors that you have in your pronunciation. Yeah, but you make it so easy. Oh, thank and you. Yeah. I think sometimes we know, like me too in Spanish, right? Like I'm like, hmm. I don't think that was quite right. And maybe I know there was a problem there, but I have no idea what it is. So I, I can't fix it. Or sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I know I should do this thing. And I think I'm doing it, but my mouth is not cooperating with my brain and it's not happening. So I, I know where the problems kind of can exist. So I think you just need a little bit of, how should we say, guidance, right? Yeah, a little bit of coaching. And then you can see these things for yourself. So rewatch yeah. the video, see like, oh, what do I need? What do I need most help with right now with Bianca? And what can I do kind of on my own? So keep that in mind. And one last question of all the things that we did, what do you think was most helpful today? Probably visualizing, like making it visual. Where mm -hmm. are the, like this, how do, how do you say it? How, like mistakes? Uh, no, not the mistakes, the symbols? but these, these weird symbols. Yeah, mm. I, I don't know how. The I, I mm -hmm. don't know how. That, the name but. of that is IPA, not the beer, IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. And so those symbols that we see, that's like, even if I were speaking, I don't know, Turkish or Mandarin or whatever, there's international symbols to show us all the sounds that humans can make. So that's why we use the symbols, because spelling in English is terrible, right? Like writing systems are not great. So we have these symbols to kind of show us. And little by little, you're going to pick some of those up. I wouldn't say, oh, go and study all the symbols. But I would <laughs> say, like, notice the ones like, oh, I'm always making a mistake on this kind of rotated yeah, upside yeah. down E thing. Maybe I should know what that is. So that knowing some of those symbols yeah. might be helpful. So yeah, the app was then very helpful for you because then you could see what you're supposed to say. And that yeah, was yeah, helpful. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, good. It's always important to me to know what's useful. So awesome. So <laughs> thanks as always. Thanks for coming and agreeing to be on this special edition of our podcast. So next time I see you, I wanted to work on some more scripts if you're ready for that, okay? Yeah, Bianca, thank you so much. Thank awesome, you Miguel. For you. You're welcome. Anytime. See you soon. See you soon, Bianca. Bye. Catch you later. Thanks for listening in. I hope that that was useful to you as well as to Miguel. My hope in recording and sharing these real one-on-one -on -one sessions is that since you might share the same frustrations that Miguel has, you also get to feel the same triumphs as he does as he gets better and as a result, more confident. And I know that some people are a little anxious or they don't know what to expect from accent coaching, but now you get a sense of what it's like to be a real client of mine. So, if you're really serious about how you sound and how you feel when you're speaking, you have a choice to make right now. You can do nothing or you can get expert help and fix your pronunciation problems once and for all. You deserve to sound just as clear and knowledgeable as you actually are. And you deserve to speak confidently. Be like Miguel and start today. Choose from once a month, every other week, 
or even weekly one-to-one accent coaching sessions. Because as I like to say, your voice is your choice. And I'll even throw in a free assessment. Join directly on my website or on my Patreon. The links are in the show notes. Please don't forget to rate and review this podcast because it really helps me more than you might think. Thanks again for listening. Bye for now.